Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Rachel Klein and I will be your presenter here for the next 20 minutes. Uh, today we are going to be talking about uh, two different report options that you have on the step two screen um, in the membership reporting section. So today is going to be part two. If you were here yesterday um, at our webinar at one o'clock Eastern time, we talked about the step one screen in reporting and how to put in the different criteria to get the specific people that you're needing to see on the report itself. Today, we're going to be talking about the step two screen and two different reporting options that are really, really utilized quite a bit uh, when building reports. And then tomorrow on our part three, we're going to be talking about um, the other four report layouts that you can choose from when building a report. Um, if you have our Membership 204 workbook, feel free to follow along with that. Um, again, it's M204, and today we're going to be talking about pages 10 through 23, and then tomorrow we're going to go through pages 24 through 30. So feel free to whip that out if you have it. If not, you can head out to our website, churchwindows.com, and under our training section, you can purchase those workbooks there if you wish. Um, but like always, I am recording this. I'll have it up on the website for you next to the part one from yesterday. Later today, uh, you can rewatch it at any time, share it with someone you think might find this ben this information beneficial, okay? Josh is here with me, bunch of people registered for this, which is great, uh, which tells me a lot of people are needing some extra information on the report. So there is a place to ask questions, but again, there's a lot of you and just me and Josh are in here today. So if you have a question, type that in to the question section on your GoToWebinar toolbar. Either Josh will give you a typed response, or if you type it in, I will wait till the end. We'll do a little Q&A, and I will read some of the questions aloud um, and get some answers for you that way as well. If you have a really specific question or something that is a little off topic, um, or if you have a report design or layout that you're wanting help with, please just call us or send us an email to support at churchwindows.com. We only have 20 minutes here today and there's a lot of you and just two of us. So if you have a really specific question or you want help building a special report, um, or just reach out to us through support, whether it's over the phone or via email, and we will get you an answer that way. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to open up membership. And you can get to reports one of two ways. You can go right here, click on the little printer icon. Or you can go up to the top, go to Reports Export, Reports and Labels, and then Reports Directory Export there. Both, uh, both options are going to take you to the same place. So let's go ahead and select that. And it's first going to open up to step one. So step one, again, we talked about yesterday. We're not going to touch on this too much. We're not going to go into detail on this at all today because that was yesterday's webinar. So if you need to rewatch that, please head out to churchwindows.com under our support center, and you can watch that there. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and hit next to get us to our step two screen. There we go. Okay. So the step two screen, there's a lot of different things going on here. How I want to approach this topic is, is go through each field and kind of explain each one to you and what it does. And then I have an example in the book that we're going to walk through from start to finish to really show you how to utilize it. So I'm going to explain a little bit first and then do an example. Once you put your criteria in on step one, you hit the next screen. You're going to come here to step two. Lower half of the screen is going to show you everyone that met the criteria that you inputted on step one. Okay, if you look through this list here on step two and realize you're missing people or you're seeing people that you shouldn't be, that means something is off with your criteria that you inputted on step one. Simply hit the back button here 
And you can go back to the step one screen and make adjustments. Now, if you find your criteria is correct and you're still seeing people you shouldn't or missing people, then that means on that individual's uh, record in people, you're going to have to make some adjustments for them accordingly so they meet the criteria that you're trying to use. Okay. So top left, we're going to start on the options tab here. You have six different layouts you can choose from. So a good way to remember how to build a report in church windows is step one is the who. That's the criteria for who you want to see on the report. Step two then, once you get here, this is the layout. So of those people that meet the criteria, what information or what layout do you want those people presented in? And that's what we're going to do today. So top left, you have a basic report. Basic report is, other than directory, is going to be the most commonly used report that we have available for you in membership. It's a simple columnar report, and I'll walk you through that here shortly, but it allows you to pick and choose the columns, and then the individual's information is going to be printed across in rows. Okay. Next, you have the all information report right here. We're going to be talking about this today as well. This is a really, really handy report if you're needing to get a lot of information out on all of the records that you have in the database. This is a perfect report for cleaning up or updating information in church windows. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the other four. Custom, this allows you to go in and build a report from scratch, okay? Isn't utilized as often as the other reports, but if you have a specific layout that you're wanting to make or create, custom is going to be a good option. Very similar to working in Publisher, if you're familiar with that, where you can drag and drop different text boxes and really get the format that you're looking for. Directory, this is a really popular one. This is where you can choose from pre-made templates that we have available for you, um, or you can edit them, or you can also create your own from scratch. But that's going to be your directory, and that's only going to pull those people who are set to be included on the directory. It's going to group them by families and allow you to print that out. My church growing up had church windows. We did our pictorial directories out of church windows, and then we also did our regular directories right from the church window software. Super handy, and it's already included in what you're doing, so no extra expenses for that. Um, mail merge and export. This is if you have data that you're wanting to export out of the software. Um, and then directory export, that's if you want to export people who are only set to be included in the directory. So if you are going with a company like LifeTouch or something similar, directory export is going to allow you to pull that data out, grouped by family, for those people set to be included. Okay? Down here, you have a Dropbox. So dependent upon which option you have selected here, the layout below is going to change or update. Okay? As you, say for example, choose basic, you can create as many new layouts as you want. All of those different layouts will be saved here. So you can create a layout that's specific for status codes, for birthdays, for ages, for anything that you need, and that layout will be here allowing you to reuse that anytime you need to reprint that report. So you're not always making new reports from scratch. Once it's made, it will st be stored here. Also have a little minus sign. If you decide you have a report that isn't of use anymore, you can simply select the report, hit the little minus sign, and that will allow you to delete the layout. You have an edit option. I'll show you in a minute. Edit allows you to go in and adjust the layout of a basic report or of other reports, depending on what you have selected. Allows you to go in, move fields, change fonts, change font sizes, really customize it to make it what you need. New, this is pretty straightforward. You're going to hit that button to go in and create a new report from scratch. And then the select fields options, which again, I'll show you, this allows you for those columnar reports to go in and select or deselect the different columns that you want to see on the report itself. Okay. All right, on to page 12. You have different options over here across the top right. These are also going to change or show you different options depending upon which layout you have selected over here on the left. 
Most of them are going to be pretty straightforward. Um, you can choose to include the family category. So this is like for visitors. If you have that V that prints, if you want to see that on a report, you would leave this checked. Uppercase last name, include additional family members. So if you have two households where you have family members that are linked to more than one, you can check that and that will then show you that information of additional family members that are linked. It's good for a directory if you have parents that have split up, the kids will show up in both people's houses, which is nice. Um, include year on birth date, again, pretty straightforward. Grouping and page break, this is really handy, especially for that all information report. If you want to have a page break for each person, when you print out all of the individual's information, you can then hand it out to this person and say, hey, can you look this over, update the information or that's incorrect or add what's missing, and then the people can return it for you. Page break on primary sort field, say you store by status code back on step one, which we talked about yesterday, um, you can then have a page break on that primary sort. So anytime the status code, because that's what we sorted on, changes to something else, you can then get a page break on that option. Alphabetic page break, this is handy for the directory. My church growing up, we had the tabs for the alphabet across the side of our directory. This could then simply flip to the letter that we were looking for. Alphabetic page break will do that for you, ending the page when it starts a different letter. Also include primary sort heading, checkbox here, and then you can change the style of the font. Unlisted options. If you're running a directory, you can have different options for whether people's unlisted information shows or not. So when you enter an email or a phone number or an address, you can mark it as unlisted. And then from here, you can decide if you want to see that unlisted print information print or not. If it does print, you can also tell it to show an asterisk so you know that is an unlisted piece of information. Okay? All right. Lot we just went over. If you have a question, feel free to put that in. Um, let's go back up here to this giving pledging date range tab. If you use donations and if you're wanting to include giving information, this allows you to adjust the date range that that giving is being displayed for. Okay, a little bit more information over here if you want to read up on that. If you're just worried about current giving information, skip over this tab. Or if you don't use donations, just skip over this tab. You don't need to mess with the dates. Organization information. This can be really handy if your church has a preschool. So if you want to change the organization information that prints on the report itself, you can come in here, hit the green plus sign, and create a new one. So by default, the organization information is going to be the information that you entered when you first set up church windows. It's going to pull that information here. If you want to go in and you want to add a new one, say for your preschool, have two options. So if you're printing preschool reports, you can hit the down arrow and choose the preschool's information to print up on the top of the reports themselves. If you don't have a preschool or you don't need any other type of organization information to print, don't worry about this tab. All right, let's go on to an example of a basic report and how to set it up. I'm on page 13, if you guys are following along. Soon as I click on reports, I need to put in my criteria. So this is my who I want to see on the report. The example in the book is talking about status code criteria. So I'm going to go in here, edit people selection. I'm going to put status code. I'm going to choose my three that the book has selected, add to selection. Here's my inputted criteria. Again, you have a lot of options over here to pick from as well. If you need more information, check out our webinar from yesterday to watch that. I'm not going to change anything with my giving and pledging criteria. I'm not worried about that at the moment. Always go up to your sort tab. Make sure your sort order is set the way you want. So this is going to be the order those people print out in on your report. I'm going to change this to status code. And then my subsort, I want to be alphabetical. So everyone with the same status code will then be sorted in alpha order. Once I have that set up, I'm going to hit next. 
And that's going to take me to my step two. So remember, my step one's who I want. My step two is the layout that I want. I'm going to go ahead with basic. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the list, you have our template. Everyone has this template basic columnar report. This report is going to give you name, it's going to give you address, and it's going to give you phone number. Regardless of what criteria you pick on step one, this is the layout that report is going to give you for everyone that meets the criteria. Okay, Name, address, primary phone. Those are our three columns. Now, let's talk about if we want to customize this a little bit. Let's say we want to name the report up here. So I'm going to close this. Right next to basic, if I come down here, I can hit the edit button. Soon as I hit that edit button, it's going to open up the report designer where you can really come in and do some customizing for this basic report. You can change fonts, you can change font sizes, um, you can make things um, different colors. All up here at the top is where you can do those customizing options for editing a layout. Now, let's say I want to add a name to this report. I'm going to call it Report of Members by status. You're, everyone's already going to have a blank box up here. It's a simple text box. You just click in there, type in whatever you want. You could also have a bunch of options here. We have more in-depth webinars working in the designer itself. If you want some more information, those are uh, again out on our support center. But I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make this font a little bit bigger. I want this header to pop and then Sorry, I had the wrong field picked. There we go. I'm also going to bold it and underline it. Once you make the changes in here that you want, we're going to come up here and we're going to do a save as. And I'm going to call this report of members, whoops, wrong by, by status. Okay. Okay. My report saved. I'm going to close. So now, under basic, instead of seeing basic columnar report, I now have that new report that I just made, report of members by status. I'm going to hit print again, and now I have my header up there for my report, my title of my report. Okay. Now, let's say I don't want to see name, address, or phone. I want to see people's name, I want to see their age, and I want to see their status code. Okay, those are the three things the book has examples for. But you can again come in here and add whatever columns you want. Let me show you that. Close the preview. I'm going to come back down here. And instead of hitting new or edit, I'm going to go to select fields. This is where you can select those columns. All right. Column selector is going to pop up. Visible columns on my right. Again, I had name, address, primary phone. I'm going to get rid of address. Simply highlight, hit the left facing arrow. Get rid of primary, highlight, hit the left phasing arrow. Now, I want to add some other information. Down here under other, I'm going to hit my plus, and I'm going to scroll down. These are all the fields over here on the left that you have available to add as a column on your basic columnar report. I'm going to put age over there. I'm going to go down to the S's. There's also a search box. You can search for what you want going to move status over. So right now my three columns are name, status, age. If you have a column header option here, you want to adjust what the header says for the column. I don't need to see first comma last, pretty straightforward what it is, so I'm just going to leave name. You also have width. You, this is how wide your columns are going to be on the report. If you have a bunch of columns you're wanting to add, you're probably going to need to make the width of each column a little bit smaller to fit all that information say okay. I'm going to say print. And now we're going to get a nice print preview of that report that we just created. You can go back into select fields again. You can pick and choose other columns as well. So as you can see, our sort is putting all of our active members together, sorting them in alphabetical order. And then here are the other statuses that came into play as well. All right, anyone has a blank age, that means they don't have a correct birthday inputted. Birthday could be blank or you might be missing part of the birth date field. But 
that's how you do a basic report. The last report I want to show you is really simple, really straightforward, is the all information report. Super handy report if you're looking to clean up your database or see what information you have on people. You're going to have two templates to choose from. You're going to have the basic all information and the multi-column all information. I'm going to show you both of those just so you can see which one you like better. Again, you can edit it just like we did for basic. You can create a new one or you can simply come in to select fields and you can pick and choose what fields you want to display. By default, it's going to show you every field, because it's called all information, that has been filled out for people. I'm going to hit print so we can see what this one looks like as well. So every active person in your database that fits our criteria, which would be those three status codes we selected, are going to appear on this report. It's going to give you every field that has been filled out for this person. All right, and this is the basic format. Now, if we jump back over here to the multi-column, this is the one I like, saves a little paper, isn't quite as spaced out. It's going to give you some tighter information if you need to look through this. Pretty handy. Now, if you want to see, say, for example, the fields that are empty, say you want to hand this out to people and have them review it and give it back. If that's the case, you can come over here. You can do basic all information. We're going to come over here and go to our grouping slash page break options. I'm going to do a page break on each person. I'm going to come over here to this all information options. This is a new tab that you don't have for the other reports. And you can specify if you want it to print empty fields. You can specify if you want to have it print a line for those empty fields, giving people a place to fill in the information. We'll go ahead and hit print. And now we have a lot more information per each page, but it's allowing people space to fill in additional information. Okay. Again, you can go in and hit this um, new button, create a new all information report. Oops. Say OK. And then back in this column selector, you can pick and choose what you want to see or what fields you want to show on that all information report, which is really handy. All right, everyone, that is everything I wanted to go over with you today.